molecular biology and quantum physics today. All right. Don't don't be shy. Don't run from the words, y'all. Don't run from the words. Y'all know what I'm gonna break it down. Don't run from the words. See the see the members growing, y'all. We getting more and more members in here, y'all. See us getting up there. Six thousand members strong. Shout out to the university. I mean, we was a few hundred deep. It's only been open, what, March? So we doing good, y'all. You know, we ain't even been open a year yet with this website. So we're going to definitely get up there to them. We need all the guys and guys we can in here, man. We need to get our people out of these lying-ass institutions, man. For real. Somebody cussed me out, y'all, on YouTube. They said I need to work on myself. They said I use too much profanity, y'all. But, you know, they so blind, they didn't even say profanity. They was like, you cuss too much. I'm like, well, I'm always working on myself. You know what I'm saying? I'm always working on self. Like, if you don't work on self, then, you you know, you, you tripping. First off, you know what I'm saying? We supposed to work on self regardless. So I'm going to do that regardless, but... I was just looking at it like, that's crazy how person they find any little way not to listen to the truth. Because I'm using profanity, now I need to, now I need to find Jesus and work on myself. And these people crazy. These people is so blind and, so blind and lackadaisical. They're so blind and lackadaisical. It leaves me flabbergasted sometimes, guys. I'm telling you. I don't know what to do with them, guys. Work it out. All right, I'm rolled up. Hopefully, you is too. We're going in. Blue, black. We raising the frequency reflections. All right. We raising the frequency. Hold on. Let's raise it the right way before we even take off. Hold on. Before we even take off. Hold on, y'all. Let's get us. Let's get us, we ain't did this in a little while. Let's get us, hold on, let's get us some deep breaths here. Let's get us some. We're going to get three of them. We're going to hold it for three seconds too. a little bit y'all just a little bit just a little bit just a little bit <sighs> just a touch of love a little bit just a touch y'all it's just a touch of love all right Here we go. I see y'all in here. Damn, we jumped to a thousand quick tonight. Welcome to class. Welcome to class reflexiations. I see y'all now. I couldn't see what was going on. Thousand. We going up quick. Y'all ain't playing around. Okay, I th thank y'all for, for understanding, man. Y'all know I love y'all. And if it wasn't for Instagram and Facebook, Silas and me, I can like go live real quick on their platforms to update y'all quicker. You know what I'm saying? So... 
It's all good, y'all. We gonna get through it. We ain't tripping about nothing. Let me let me light this thing. Let me light this. Let me light this thing on you real quick. Let me light this thing on you real quick. Oh yeah, this is a good one, y'all. We going in. We going straight in. We going straight in, y'all. We've been waiting all day to go in. I've been waiting all day. I don't even want to play with nobody other day, mama, right now. Y'all got to bear with me. You hear me? Treat me like a grizzly and bear with me. You hear me? Treat me like T. Grizzly and bear with me. Okay, so first let me start by saying peace to the gods, the goddess of the planet Kai. Peace meaning positive energy always creates elevation. All right? Um, before we dive into this spiritual lecture, it's imperative that we open it up with the right spiritual energy. So let me send the deepest of insights to my elders, those 65 and older in the university. We appreciate each and every one of you. Um, we had a thousand quick tonight on the late night side. So I appreciate you all tuning in to catch it live. Um, definitely this is a deep one. You want to lock in. You might want to take some notes, get your pens, get your pads out. I got a book coming out too soon. So I'm going to put a lot of this stuff in the book. And go a lot deeper and have more pictures for you all to see. But definitely, like, um, tonight, let, we going to dive into neuromelanin. So, although the lecture is titled Blue Black, because this is what they like to call us when we so fucking black that they consider that blue. We're going to dive into why they call it Blue Black. What is Blue Black? We're going to dive into these Egyptian gods. We finna dive into metaphysics a little bit, quantum physics. So, yeah, we, 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 finna, we, we finna get to the bottom of this shit tonight. All right. So, sending up with the deepest of insight to the elders, to, the, to my peers, those 20, 30, 40, 50 in the university. Welcome in on a late night. We gather. Get, it's time to, you might want to take notes on this one tonight, y'all. Now, I don't always say that. This one you want to lock in. A any lecture we give, you want to lock in, but definitely lock in tonight. We're going we gonna to break down some, we're going to get into some real, some real supreme metaphysics tonight. This is going to explain to you why you are God, why you are the supreme being that you are. Like every time we get in here and build, my job is to give you more proof that you are what you are and why you are what you are. Okay. All right. So. To the 21 and under crowd, I did not forget about you all. I want to send the deepest of insight to you all. You all definitely want to lock in tonight. All right, this one of them, this one of them classes we, we, we really want to lock in. We don't want to be frying chicken and shit in the background while we listening to Rashad Jamal playing out loud. This one of them tap in. You want to look at the screen. You want to pay attention to everything I'm saying. <sighs> all right. So, look, we're going right in. All right, so now that we all on the same page, we in here. I appreciate you all for coming in here tonight. Shout out to the university. We in here. All right. Peace to the ancestors. We got Ogun in here. Peace to the God. We got him in here. We got we got Oya right in here with us. Peace to the goddess. All right. We got her in here. All right. So, cool. So, we have something that they like to call on our planet that is known as blue black. Whenever you see a... a, a, a a black person that, that that they like to call us, you know, black people. Whenever you see somebody with this dark pigment, that that they normally call that blue black. All right, now you'll notice a, a vast difference from African Americans in the Americas, and you go to Jamaica overseas or you go to Africa. You'll notice that I mean, we have um, gods over here with dark pigmentations. Yes, we do. But you'll notice that over in Africa and overseas, you'll find even darker pigments. All right. The reason that is the reason that is because is because Africa was was attacked last. All right. So we were strong all over this planet. All right. Remember, this entire realm rather was Atlantis. So the entire realm of Atlantis, we were strong on this realm. All right. But our weak point. Hold on. Let me just give you all a map. Let's pull up a map real quick just to get a, a, a visual going. All right. Because they, they told us history in reverse. History was told to us in reverse. All right. So the oppressor, when he taught us history, his version of the story, he had to hide everything from us. So he told it to us in reverse. We're going we gonna, to we gonna, we gonna straighten it out, though. All right. So first off, let us look at this world map. Let us understand something right away. that This is not the way the map looks. Every single state and country on this map is literally bigger than the size they are showing you on this map. And it is shaped completely different. 
All right. Let me let the record reflect that before we keep reading this map. So we're only using this as a class reference. But let me let you all know, class, gods and goddesses, you are the elite. All right. We remember who we are. This map of our rim looks shit like this. All right. It does not look like this, but that's a whole nother lecture. OK. We want to look at Africa, what they call it, Africa. We want to look at what they call in the United the, the, the Americas. OK, so the Americas, a lot of people don't never consider Canada to be part of the Americas, but Canada is part of the Americas. So you got North America, which is all of Canada and the United States, president of the United States. You got Central America, which is all of Mexico. You see it? all of from Mexico down to right here where they got Central America and Mexico connect. All of that will, will literally be Central America. And down here, this whole continent where you see Brazil and Chile and Peru. This whole continent, that's South America. So South America, Central America, North America, okay? Because they don't never really break it up like that. All right, so keep that in your mind. So this is the realm. We were everywhere, yes. As Atlanteans, uh, Anunnaki gods, yes, we were everywhere on this realm. However, we did have weak points, all right? It, the resistance had weak points, Okay. So when I say weak points, this doesn't mean that we were weak physically, but we were we might not have had as many pyramids set up, energetic pyramids, because everything was about communication or telecommunication, which the true form of telecommunication is telepathy. All right. When you think of telecommunication now, you think of people sitting in a building somewhere blowing people phone up all day trying to make sales for the company. No, true telecommunication comes from telepathy. We will we will communicate um, telepathically so that's why it was truly called telecommunication but these these oppressors stole everything from us and dumbed it down and you know put his own wording on everything okay but i want y'all to look at at where africa is this was our weak point now they make you think because history is told to us in reverse right they make us believe that africa is where we all came from if you black we all came from this one little landmass and that this is a stronghold when in reality, when in reality, they tell you, they always have taught us that Africa has all the different forms of weather. Africa is 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 rich in resources. All right. They have always told you that Africa is the richest place in resources. But guess what? They are lying. The richest place in resources is North America. This is why when these Pleiadians and Draconians landed on our, our realm, when they entered our realm through portals in the Caucasus Mountains, the Caucasus Mountains is over here in the Russia, Europe area. This is all the Caucasus region. This is the deadest part of the land on this planet. Nothing literally grows in this area. OK, so this is what. This is really what they were showing you in Lion King when 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 when, when Mufasa was showing Simba all of Pride Rock. And he said, everything the light touches is ours. Well, before these draconian reptilians and Pleiadians and human beings ever came to our planet, Europe was always the deadest part of this realm. All right. That doesn't mean that we didn't use it, but it was just a dead spot. Like we really hadn't built nothing up yet. It was still being worked on. Remember, it was a great war that took place here with Zeus. So once that war took place, all type of projects that were being built kind of ceased to exist because Everything kind of went on hold once that war took place and nothing was ever the same again. So we never finished building up Europe. It's still to this day, it's the deadest part of the land. Like nothing literally grows in Europe. But they'll fool you into believing London and Italy and France and Germany. And, you know, they, they'll have you thinking that all these little countries are world powers. Like even right now or the Middle East. Like, but, but to this day, nothing grows in this area. No natural good fruits, grains, vegetation, nuts. All right. Notice this is also the coldest part of the planet. Russia, Germany, all of this is cold as fuck because this is the Caucasus region, which they have silt up with ice nomads. All right. It's the hub for what they do. They, their winter making technology is in Europe still to this day because they come out the Caucasus. So they still protect that, that, that portal. That portal is still there in the Caucasus mountains. Let us not forget. Okay, let's pull up the caucus real quick. Pull up the caucus. Oh no, we not fucking around tonight. We 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 just we just some color. So we just some core some cordial colored concerned citizens. 
For real, for real. All right? Let's 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 go back to the caucus, y'all. Caucus, caucus, caucus mountains. All right? Let's look at a real live picture of the caucus. Let's go to Wikipedia. Okay, so y'all can see this for y'allself. For those who never looked it up, some should have. But this is the Caucus Mountain area. Caucus Mountains. They actually exist. This is why, let us not forget that this is why our ancestors, this is why we originally named them Caucasians or Caucasoids. Because they entered our realm. Okay? They entered our realm. This is, this is the entire realm. They entered it through portals in the Caucasus Mountains. The Caucasus Mountains are still here to this day. Okay. And nothing grows over there in the Caucasus. It's completely frozen. It's been frozen since they has landed here because them, that's where the portals that they entered through. So that's their headquarters. Look. Let's look at it. Caucasus Mountains. Look at this shit. Frozen. Y'all see this? This is where they come from. This is where they come from, y'all. This is where they come from. Look how dead this is. Nothing but portals under these. Remember, these was trees that they chopped down. All right? Before they chopped the trees down, there was giant trees here, but it was still a dead part of the land. This is the Caucasus Mountain area. All right? This is where they come from. So let us not forget that. So they come out the Caucasus. That's why this whole area is still cold as fuck to this day. Now, they have taught us that Africa is what all the resources is. In reality, all the resources is here. Why do you think they came and made the United States their headquarters? The United States is the world power, right? Yes, because this is their headquarters. All right. This is why Malcolm X said we didn't land on Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock landed on us. He was literally talking about spaceships landing on us, on our realm. All right. So when they came here. All right. They knew that the, all the resources is actually in what over here in America and Africa is actually Mexico, Mexico and Brazil. All this shit is actually Africa. But they got you thinking Africa is over here. The back of Africa starts with Arizona and it goes all the way down here. But they got you thinking Africa is over here. And that's why if you look at Africa, look at how Africa is shaped and look at how South America is shaped. You could tell they shaped. Look at Africa's shape and South America's shape. They shaped them the same, but they exaggerated Africa shape just a little more to try to throw us off from the fact that Africa is still connected to what we think. That's why they got an ancient map that shows you Morocco and Egypt and all these different countries. And stay. They get deep. That's a whole different lecture, though. That's a whole different lecture. Let us stay focused. All right. Hold on. All right. Let us stay focused. So. Now, it's a reason why they, they speak on this pigmentation that she has. When you see somebody with this pigmentation, all right, these are beings that have not went through the genetic raping, all right, that other tribes went through. They didn't go through as much of that, all right? The avatars didn't. So, when the soul and spirit re-enters these certain avatars, all right, you see a lot of these tribes mostly over in Africa, okay, you will see this dark, deep pigmentation, which is different than this. You see? This comes from raping. This, no raping. Raping, no raping. But even over here, I would be considered chocolate and dark. You get what I'm saying? But standing next to her, I would be like a red bone. Damn near. I'll be like a yellow bone, red bone, caramel, whatever all them crazy names y'all be throwing out there. Shit, y'all know what all the names y'all be coming up with. I don't fucking know. Mocha, whatever the fuck y'all be saying. Shit. Y'all know what I'm saying, what I'm saying. It. All right. But they even came, they have, society has went out their way to, to make fun of this pigmentation. And we need to find out why. What's wrong with blue black? What's so wrong with this pigmentation? Why did they rape us to get us to this pigmentation and lighter, even lighter than mine? You know, it's people way lighter than me. We know that. I'm just saying. All right. Why? What's wrong with blue, black? Why do they don't? Why don't they like this color so much? Why? She was what she said she was 
model was teased for her dark skin when she was younger. This is pure, pure beauty, though. But she was teased for that. But she has super high levels, all right, of carbon. Remember, when you're talking about the avatar, you're talking about, you're talking about carbon. All right. Remember, the spirit and soul is the is God. That's the God in you that even created the carbonated body, the crystallized body. We are dark matter energy beings. So when one has this deep, dark color, that means you have more neuromelanin in you. Neuromelanin means you have higher dark matter energy levels naturally just because of how dark the avatar is. So that means she is naturally faster, stronger, a little more acute to things than we are just because her avatar hasn't been as tainted. That's just on the outside. We're just dealing with the outside right now, y'all. We ain't talking about the inside. Because the outside and the inside matters. The inside is the soul and the spirit. Spirit is what? Electricity. The soul is what? Magnetism. Life force. All right? Keep that in mind. We're going to find out why that's so important. Now, on the outside, you have an avatar. You have skin. The skin is made of what? Carbon. All right? Carbon is what? The basis on which all life forms. Let's pull it up. Hmm. Let's pull it up real quick, y'all. Carbon, we talking about the outside. We're talking about the skin right now. So we talk about what, what gives the pigmentation this deep, rich blackness. Or oh, this ain't even black. This is carbon. This is dark matter energy. Because we have, we have never been black. But what gives the skin this deep, rich, carbon, native reflection like this? I mean, what gives the skin this deep, rich pigmentation like this? It's carbon. Now, what is carbon? Let's look it up. Let's go to Google real quick. Let's go back to the basics. So, so that we don't forget, let's go back over it. What is carbon? Pay attention, class. We're getting deeper. What is carbon? Let, 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 what is carbon now? Hold on. It says carbon is a chemical element. All right. So like I told y'all, we was going to be talking about molecular biology, quantum physics, chemistry, metaphysics today in today's class. All right. So when you talk about carbon, you're talking about chemistry here. Carbon is a chemical element like hydrogen. Let's X out oxygen because that's bad. We already know oxygen is bad. That's the shit that they spray in the air. We're not supposed to breathe oxygen. We suppose we originally breathe hydrogen. All right. But let's stay focused. Carbon is a chemical element like hydrogen, lead or any of the others in the periodic table. Carbon is a very abundant element. It exists in pure or nearly pure forms such as diamonds and graphite, but also can combine with other elements to form molecules. OK, but not only that, not only that, not only that carbon. I'm going to put it in myself. Carbon is the basis. I like to use the scientific word, the basis from which all life is formed up. You pull it up. Building block of life. Let's click on that. Maybe to show you. Boom. Carbon is the universal building block of life for life as we know it. All right. So all material, all this whole material environment. Look at all this around y'all. Look at my house. All this little blah, blah, blah. carbon is the basis for all of that. Not atoms. You would think it's atoms. We're going to get into atoms. But carbon is the basis for all of that. Carbon is the universal building block for life as we know it. Its ability to form complex, stable molecules with itself and other elements. This is how intelligent carbon is that it can form molecules it creates on its own. This is what we are filled with. This is what makes you God. All right. You have this is carbon. This is carbon. And the more of this you have. Hold on. The more carbon you have. The darker the pigmentation. So this is where that old saying came from. The black of the berry, the sweet of the juice. You see what I'm saying? It wasn't no, no freaky shit. It was talking about the atomic level of you. Molecule, the, the molecular level of us. Our DEA. This doesn't mean you're weaker than somebody. No, but your physical avatar, it affects your physical avatar. All right? So the reason... 
we appear these deep rich colors is because we have carbon. And this is the basis from which all life is formed. Okay? It's the building block for life. That's all you need to remember. And you are full of it. You are a carbonated being. And the more carbon you have, the deeper the, the deeper the, the deeper it is going to show, the darker the pigmentation. And this is why they fear you the darker you are. This is why they always try to make, this is why they put the, the, dark, the dark slave against the light skin slave. Because even if you are light, you are still full of carbon. It's just people that are darker have more carbon. That's it. If you black, you full of carbon regardless. You're a carbonated being. You're black or what they call Latino. All my Latino brothers and sisters. This is why I keep telling people. Ain't no such thing as a Latino or African American or black or any of that. If you go to, to the genetics of the people we consider Puerto Ricans and Latinos, they all are full of carbon. This is what allows us to feed the sun's frequency, y'all. The carbon. That's why the sun strengthens us. And if you lack carbon, it hurts you. Okay? The carbon now. Now. So now that we know that the more carbon you have, the darker the pigmentation, now we know what blue black, what, what, what we talking about when we talking about blue black. We're talking about carbon. And when we're talking about the more carbon you have in the avatar, that says a lot about your dark matter energy levels. All right? Not just, not be, not on a, on a soulful level. This could be confusing because it's, 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 it's deep, but not from a soulful level, not from a soulful perspective. Like, because a person could be dark than a motherfucker and still be sleep. Get what I'm saying? Just because you have a lot of carbon does not mean you're going to be vibrating high neither. That's still a battle that we all have to fight in this third density that we when we enter this matrix. Light cold lockdown is here. All right. But for people with carbon in their skin like this, guess what? It's easier for them to break like cold lockdown because they have such high levels of this carbon, this dark matter energy. It's dark matter energy. And all black people and Latino people have this dark matter energy. It is the strongest form of energy in the universe. This is what they call it. And, and the more of it you have, you know, this is how we get to this blue black terminology. But yeah, black reaches a point. To where it begins to vibrate blue because this is what the blue flame is about. Remember, we've been talking about the kundalini energy rising. All right. The kundalini energy is the blue flame. All right. So carbon is very warm, but the blue flame is warmer. All right. So that's why our body temperature is warm. Think about it. Your body temperature is warm. Everything is warm. Everything in the cosmos is warm. Winter is unnatural. We're going to get to that, though. We're going to say that for later in the lecture. Okay. This is why they taught you to hate your skin. No matter if you're light skinned black, no matter if you're Latin, if you're Latino, you you this you this black, no matter what black, you got carbon in your skin. You you are you are the basis from which all life is formed. Man. This is science right here, man. That you gotta know about you. This ain't no this ain't no shit to laugh about. This ain't no shit to joke about. This ain't this ain't even the time to be laughing right now. We got a time and a place for that. Y'all know we got our times we kick it. This ain't even one. Like, this has to be embedded in your soul. We discussed it tonight about blue, black, and neuromelanin. All right? All carbonated beings have neuromelanin. All right? If you lack carbon, you have melanin. So that means all white people have melanin. But you got black people, even though we know black ain't real, you got gods and goddesses walking around saying they got melanin in them because they have been they have flipped it. They told us everything in reverse. Beings with melanin cannot take sunlight. They break out and get melanomas. They need suntan lotion. But carbonated beings need the sun. So you would never break out from being in it. At the most, you got some people that like they have eczema. Your eczema might act up. But that's just that's just has everything to do once again with the light cold lockdown. You're not finna break out into melanomas. That's a whole different type of thing. All right. So understand the science. We talking the chemical structure of us. All right. Now. Hold on.
when we talking about blue, right? The elites understand the power of blue. How do we, how do, first off, when you talking blue, black, right? The darker, the more carbon, the more neuromelanin. Now you're finna break, now you're, you're further breaking this light cold lockdown, right? Just with your avatar. This is what they trying to kill off. This is what they trying to kill off. Our, us. They trying to kill us off, right? It doesn't matter how dark you are. It doesn't matter. All right? It's just the darker you are, they make life harder for you. Like she say, she was teased for being that dark. And the lighter you are in society, to this day, it's still kind of like that. They show all the red bones. All the red bones get the love. See what I'm saying? All right? So... You still got gods and goddesses walking around saying they don't want to be in the sun too long because they don't want to get too dark. You with me? All right? We, we got this type of shit going on. Hold on. We got this type of shit going on. Look, this is the farm. He tweeted this the other day. Started my skin bleaching process today. It's time for change. And he got 3,000 tweets, 1,000 likes, and 277 retweets. This is celebrity. You see that goes blue check. That's Nicki Minaj, ex-husband Safari. He talking about he want to bleach his skin. See what I'm saying? This, this, I mean, this type of shit we living in. You know, the kill off the kill off the neuromelanin is a real thing right now, man. The kill off the neuromelanin is a real thing right now, man. They want the melanin to pop. Not the neuromelanin. That's why they don't care about you saying melanin popping because you're basically spell casting what they want to happen. They want the melanin to be popping, not the neuromelanin. Know the difference. Know the difference. Supreme reflection. Let me see your charger. Know the difference, supreme reflections. All right. Know the difference. Thank you. All right. Now, remember I told you, your original complexions were blue, green, and red. All right? That's why in the movie Avatar, they showed you this. They showed you the true skin complexions of your, of your ancestors and how the avatars really looked at first. Okay. Look, check them out. Who you think they was depicting in this movie, man? Come on, man. They got a lot. Look, man. Who you think they was depicting? Hold on, Pinterest. We ain't fucking with you. All right. This avatar, y'all. Okay. Come on, man. Who you think they depict in this movie Avatar? Us. Look at the details. Look at the piercings in the ears, the gauges. That's us. The locks or braids with crystals on them. Us. She got crystals on her neck. He got crystals around his neck. Them supposed to be locks. That was depicting us in this movie. All right? They was depicting us through the whole movie. But knowing we didn't know, they showed you how the planet looked in this movie and everything. But when you talking about these blue complexions, man, this is what they fear. This is what we going back to. Motherfuckers is going back blue and green and red. You know what I'm saying? Because we are going back to breathing hydrogen again. This is why many of you are struggling, having headaches, feeling weird, because we are going through retrogrades. Retrogrades is, is has has a retrograde is, is when the atmosphere is basically being cleaned up because we are breathing oxygen. But you have the Nerubians here cleaning up the skies right now. I keep telling you, planet Nibiru is a planet, a spaceship, and a sun. It looks just like a sun. Some days it's, it's out there, you think it's the sun, and it's not. It's, it's planet Nibiru. All right. We are going back, though. Look at this. We are going back to this state of breathing nothing but hydrogen. 
Look at the what she got around her neck. Those are crystals. Crystals. Because that represents how we connected back then. All right? They, they have always put this shit in the movies. All right? But we were blue. All right? Let me show the vision real quick. Remember I told y'all that they are soulless beings. So they can't create nothing in Hollywood. They only can replicate what has actually happened. You know what I'm saying? I told you that we used to have little chips in our heads. All right? That connected us. Check this out. That connected us. To these ancient pyramids that we had that were made out of these giant crystals. Look at this in the movie Avengers. This is their superhero, Vision. And what is that in the center of his head? A crystal. And that's exactly the way the crystal set in the middle of our head. And I've showed this to the class before, but I'm just connecting more dots tonight. All right? We actually had crystals like this. And some of us were actually red like he is. And notice in the movie, Thanos couldn't even win the fucking war until he got the soul stone. And who had the soul stone vision? And where was it? In the middle of his head. Yeah, they put all this shit in the movies, man. All right? They put it all in the movies. Put it right in front of you. All right? So, let's go to the Smurfs, right? When they came out with this cartoon a long time ago called the Smurfs, you know, a lot of people loved this cartoon and it went over people's head. We didn't know, you know, what we know today. Okay, but in reality, they were mocking your ancestors, man. All right, the Smurfs, this was actually a group of Atlanteans that lived on this realm that were actually called the Smurfs. All right, and they were actually blue and they were actually someone where they were, they were, they were smaller because they were part of the elemental families. All right, all of your magical elemental beings exist, but the Smurfs actually exist, very intelligent elemental beings. All right. That were killed off. But then, you know, they killed them off. All right. And then they put in a, put a movie out about them, a cartoon out about them and mock them and make money off it. The Smurfs. But the reason they had them blue is because we were breathing hydrogen and oxygen. So we were all in this format. All right. And even if you read about the Smurfs, right. Check this out. Check this out real quick. If you read about the Smurfs, go to Wikipedia. Let's find, let's read their story, right? Check it out. What were they into? Check it out. The, the, the Smurfs. Let's, let's read their storyline. Check this out. The storyline tends to be simple tales of bold adventure. The cast has a simple structure as well. Almost all characters look essentially alike, mostly male. This was replicated to make this is actually mocking fun of our species because in the beginning, our species was all what? Feminine, female. OK, so. And it was a few males in the beginning. So with the Smurfs, they flipped it and they made it mostly male with a few females like they did in their Bible. All right. Check it out. And they only gave you three females. Why? Because we understand the power of the three, six and the nine. So they understand the power of the Trinity. They gave you Smurfette, Sasset and Nanny Smurf. All right, now this was all by design. All right, with blue skin, white trousers with a hole for their short tails, while white hat in the style of pride green caps. All right, now let's keep, now check this out. Let's keep reading more about them. All right, Smurfs can walk and run, but often move by skipping on both feet. So when you're talking about skipping on both feet, that's a form of flotation or levitation in a way, which is what your ancestors did anciently. OK, now check out what they ate. They love to eat. Sarsaparilla, which is a which is a species of grapes. Let's click on it and see. Exactly. A species of grapes, which these grapes help to heal certain things in the avatar naturally. And this is why they trying to they kind of keep this hidden from the public. All right. And they tainted most of them. And they mostly found it like Mexico. Right. Exactly. Mexico and Central America. Right. Exactly, because this is the strongest part of Atlantis. Let's go back to the map. What was the strongest part of Atlantis? The Americas. Remember that. Remember that. All this is connected. Okay. How they put this shit right in our faces. We talk about blue, black, and the power of blue. All right. And and why they fear it. Hold on. Let's go back. Let's go back. Where we at? Where we at? What was we at? We was right here. All right. This was the Smurfs eat though. Okay. 
The Smurfs eat this. How in a cartoon, this is something they eat. And not only did our ancestors ate this, because this also helped to keep the Avatar more um, fully charged with electricity, which will help keep the Avatar more youthful, if you want to call it that. And it just so happened the Smurfs did the same damn thing in the fucking cartoon. See what I'm saying? And they know you ain't going to look into this type of shit. They know you don't know what your ancestors was eating and about the Cyrus Spirala plants and shit like that. They know that. And in the cartoon, they hid them under the name uh, whose berries the Smurfs naturally call Smurf berries. So in the cartoon, they were called Smurf berries, but this was the Smurf berries actually represented the Cerisparilla that our ancestors used to eat. And this is a plant that still exists to this day. We don't need no medication. You eat the Cerisparilla, you talking about youthfulness and not avatar, not age and all that shit. You get what I'm saying? Because it will be fighting off the oxygen and the, and the more, and the, and the, and the more gelins naturally. And they tainted this. The government has this shit. Facts. All right? We diving real fucking... We getting in there today. All right? And check it out. We never age. So when they get to telling you about how the Smurfs... The Grandpa Smurf was old as 100 years old. That's just going to show you how we were timeless beings. Age represents what? If something is old, you can say it's what? Ancient. So the way the elites like to hide our truth when they do put our shit in their cartoons... They want to call, they want to say how old the Smurfs were able to get. This is this, so the whole story of the Smurfs was about not only our species, but a subset of us called the Smurfs that actually existed. All right, that they killed off. All right, I ain't got to keep going and to the language and Smurf village and their economy because all this shit is about us. All right, the Smurfs is about us and how they killed us off. And they made fun of this shit and put it in the cartoon and made, and made a lot of money off it. All right, but it's all about killing off the blue. All right, we still talking about blue, black, and blue. The Smurfs were blue. Why? Breathing all that hydrogen. But blue also represents the highest vibration, which is the blue flame. All right. That's why in Dragon Ball Z, they always talk the highest form was, was Super Saiyan Ultra Blue and shit like that. All right. But let's keep going. Let's keep diving into blue in Egypt. All right. What does the color blue mean in ancient Egypt? The ancient Egyptian word signifies blue and green. Why? Because most of us was blue, green, or red, with the majority of us being blue or green. And then a subset of us was red. Facts. All right? Let's keep going. What does the color blue mean in ancient Egypt? Check it out, y'all. Check it out. In ancient Egypt, blue... One of the most popular colors because of its vibration, y'all. We know the vibration of blue, all right? We know the way it pertains to us metaphysically as well. Let's not us, let us not forget that blue represents pineal gland, all right? Let's not us, let, let us not forget what blue represents, all right? But check it out because the ancient Egyptians who were, who the people they call the ancient Egyptians were part of our ancestors, okay? Even though we know Egypt was an actual planet, which is a whole nother lecture I'll make, but... Um, yeah, I'll probably do that next week, talk about planet Egypt, all right? But let's see with the Egyptians who are our ancestors who were more in tune because they want a higher vibration, what they thought about the color blue, all right? One of the most popular colors commonly referred to as Egyptian blue was made from what? Copper and iron oxides. That's what I want y'all to say, copper and iron, all right? Copper and iron. Copper and iron oxides with silica and calcium lies. All right. But it symbolized fertility, birth, rebirth, and life. And usually used to depict water in the heavens, right? So when we talk about the heavens, we just talk about the cosmos. You know, they're going to Google, going to still play with certain words to throw you off. Like right here, it was made from copper and iron. The silica and calcium lies. All right. Now, let's get deeper into it, though. Let's get deeper into it, though. Let's get. Look at how many Egyptian paintings that your ancestors left of these blue gods. Egyptian paintings. All right. Look at them. Egyptian paintings. Look how many Egyptian paintings depicted blue 
blue ancestors. Do you think they just drew this shit to draw out to draw it? They was just they feel like drawing some shit. Niggas just felt like drawing some shit that day. You know? Niggas spent thousands of years. They just they they made him brown. They made him brown, made her brown. But all of a sudden she's yellowish green and he's blue. You think they did that by accident? You think this was by the accident? That's Osiris. Think this was by accident, man? That they painted these Egyptian paintings of us as blue? These were our original pigmentations when we vibrated higher. Okay, now keep in mind, we now are copper because we are vibrating lower. We are breathing in oxygen, which rusts out the body and kills the hydrogen. So now instead of vibrating these beautiful blues and greens and reds, we are, we are copper complexion. But we are, which, which is, and we are only copper still because we are full of carbon. The carbon is what made us blue, red, and green originally. But your, this is how we look before the atmosphere was drained. Look, that's why they drew so many of, your, of the Egyptian gods blue, man. That wasn't by accident. That's not them being funny. These are our original pigmentations. Look, green, blue. You're going to see a lot of that go through Egyptian. And our, every Egyptian painting ain't like that. Because you'll also see us these pigments. All right, so when they draw, when they drew these, most of these motherfuckers who call themselves historians, they not tapped in with the ancestors. They don't know how to read these paintings. They don't even know what this represents. When you see these on the wall, this represents a change in frequency. Let me show y'all something. Let me show y'all, like, this is a good one, right? This is supposed to be the tomb of Nefertiti, right? On the left, supposed to be Osiris. On the right, supposed to be Adam. Okay? Osiris is, is Adam. This is what most historians don't know. Osiris and Adam are the same individual. Okay? But the reason that Osiris is green right here is because we were in a higher frequency. We were at a higher frequency. Hold on, reflections. Hold on, reflections. I let the iPad die. So, hold on. Let me let it come back on. But yeah, though, we were at a higher frequency, though. Hey, man, you put me some orange juice real quick. We back. We back. We back. We back. Uh, here we go. We back. Boom. All right. So the reason that Osiris is green right here is because we were on a higher frequency. This represents we were vibrating on the 33rd dimension and higher before these beings came and invaded our planet. Now, right here when you see them, this copper complexion, this represents after the fall, after they conquered us, after they came in. You know, because they been, they started spreading the oxygen in the air. That was part of the original, um, when they raided us, when they ransacked us. They were spraying oxygen. They blew up our crystal towers. They pushed our sun away. Well, our second sun away. Okay, so this represents a change in frequency. A lot of historians don't know that because they're not tapped in like that. So when you go to all these Egyptian paintings and you see them go from green and blue and then all of a sudden this, this the same two people. But people reading this painting to think this is four different people because they're not tapped in. I can read this because I'm tapped in. I'm divine insight. Grandmaster teacher of the eighth universe. So I'm just here to help enlighten. And inform and remind you, that's why I came back. That's my entire mission. Yeah, I laugh and I joke, but that's just part of me helping remind you who you are. Okay? But notice right here, she's green. She's a lightish green. A yellowish green. And he's blue right here. But look, she's look, she looks like more royalty. You see? Royalty. Royalty. Right here. Now this is this is still him. 
But now he's begging. Notice the two cups in his hand. He's begging now. He has his hands out as if he's begging. All right. So when the Egyptians was drawing these paintings, they were trying to explain to us because they knew telepathy. They knew that we would fall further in frequency. So they left paintings behind so that we could try to remember who we are. OK, so the right here, this is him. But on, he, he was on his stone at first vibrating. He was blue. Then he fell in frequency. Now he don't have nothing in his hand. He got his hands out asking for stuff. This is what happened to us with no throne to sit on. He's now standing up. This is your story right here, black man, Latino man, right here. This is what this really means. This is our goddesses standing behind her God. Ten toes, for she created him to rule all. But now that he's fell in frequency, she's also fell in frequency. She's now, listen, right here, she's just as big as him. She's actually bigger than him because remember, he's sitting on top of a stool, on top of a stoop, and she's his height now. So if you remove this stoop and he come down, she's bigger than him because this represents how our goddess has created everything. We are equal, but she's still first. She created everything. And look at her now. She's not even big, big as him. She's smaller than him. And she's behind him. And she's also fell in frequency. This is what this whole picture represents. But historians sit here and just show you this because they don't want to tell you the truth. It represents a change in frequency. And you see this all through Egypt. It look, same shit. Change in frequency, y'all. It's a change in frequency. Look at us, man. Look how big we were. That's why they showed you this. So we were huge. We were huge. Change in frequency. Now look at us. This look, this is him at first. Then he fell further in frequency. Lost itself. Look, she's right here with him. She fell so far in frequency. Now he's standing there without her. She's not even in this picture. She's been completely cut off from him. This represents how the black man today and the black woman are. Don't even get along. She fell in frequency, but she's not even in the picture no more. You know, I can read all these off like this, but a lot of individuals don't know this, right? Just like when they show you this. When they showing you this, they're showing you the blue aliens who existed. They're not just showing you. Your ancestors didn't just show you a, a, a guy physique, two arms, two legs with a bird head for no reason. That's a blue avian. That's an extraterrestrial species that actually exists. But I'm going to save that for a whole nother lecture. That's a whole nother lecture, y'all. All right. So understand the power of blue, first off. All right. And the vibration of it and what it represents. Look at this. These beings exist. You think that your ancestors just drew this to draw this? That they was drawing shit to just... No. No. This represents how death isn't real. And how it was conquered. This is supposed to represent a, a dead god, but he's conquered that. This... These beings actually exist, though. All right. It's many beings that exist. That's why you need to study Egyptian paintings. All right. They wasn't just drawing things to draw them. OK. Whole species of them. They show you the species. Then they show you just look at the scales and the balance and the imbalance after the fall in frequency. All right. Most of these paintings is about to fall, y'all, and were left behind for us to wake up with light codes in them. Okay? All right? So, understand that. This is Osiris. Anytime you pull up any picture of Osiris, they're going to always show him green because he was green. All right? They're going to always show you Osiris in some type of green form if you kind of look him up. Look. They're going to always try to depict them green. Okay? You look up Osiris, any pictures of him, look, all these pictures that are supposed to be Osiris, look, they always going to show them to you green. Miss the nails, though, they exaggerating with that, you know, that's they try to, they always try to do some monster effect on us to make us look like, you know what I'm saying? But, now. I want to pull something up on the screen, something else up on the screen. And I want to show y'all. Let me go to it. 
Blue black, a sort of electric blue tone that occurs when the skin pigment has gone beyond black. Blue black is very black indeed. So electric blue, right? I wanted to show you that because electric blue is a scientific term that actually exists. And the, 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 blue, the blue is the highest form of electricity, electric impulse because of the blue flame. This is the kundalini energy, y'all, that's rising right now in the community. The blue flame is what they fear. Okay? I showed y'all that. Now, this was floating around on the internet. I screenshotted this because I wanted y'all to see this quote that Manly P. Hall stole from us. But the quote goes like this. We are the gods of the atoms that make up ourselves. But we are also the atoms of the gods that make up the universe. All right? That's real. Let me read it again. We are the gods of the atoms that make up ourselves. But we are also the atoms of the gods that make up the universe. Now, everything at its base form breaks down the atoms. Now, why, why, is, why is atoms important? My bad, wrong pictures, y'all. Why is items why why is items important? All right. Why is items important? I'm gonna show you exactly why. Because when you're talking about neuromelanin, remember I told you that Osiris and Adams, and Adams was the same person. So first thing that need to be seen, let's go to it. Let me pull it up. Okay, so when you're talking about blue, black, and you're talking about neuromelanin, you need to understand that everything starts with autumn, and it's four different autumns, okay? And this is where it gets deep, because the elites, you know, this is how they really hid you from you, okay? And how they fear this neuromelanin that makes you the God source, okay? Now, let's start with Adam. The first Adam is spelled A-T-U-M, Adam, Egyptian, sun god. Also, he was the first Anunnaki to come to planet Ka. Now go, let's go look up Adam. All right, let's go look up Adam. A-T-U-M, Egyptian god. Let's see what it says about Adam. All right, Adam, Egyptian civilization, gods and goddesses, Adam. A prime evil cosmic god. Adam is the sun god. As creator, he's also the substance for which all creation is creation is unfurled. He is the lord of the universe. And in his, you see what I'm saying? This is Adam. Adam. And I was trying to tell you earlier that Adam and Osiris is the same motherfucker. All right. That's why in that picture, they showed them like this. This is Osiris. This is Adam. Look, the gods Osiris and Adam from the tomb of Nefertiri, New Kingdom wall painting. Okay? Same individual, bef before the fall, after the fall. Okay? Let's go back to Adam, though. So we're talking about Adam. Okay? Now, understand that back home on our planet, our home planet of Sirius X, Adam was one of the very first gods ever created. Okay, you got Zeus that was created first, and then Adam was basically like second. Okay? Now, Adam was also among the original 24 scientists that helped create the entire multiverse. This was Adam. Okay? Now, he's a black god, if you want to use the term black. And this is why in the Bible, they stole Adam from the original Adam. A-T-U-M. All right? This is the original Adam. Let me go back to it. The original Adam represents us, Anunnaki. First to ever come to planet Kai. This is why in Egypt, he's known as... Let's click on him. In Egypt...
Adam's name is thought to be derived from the verb, which means to complete or to finish. Thus, he has been interpreted as being the complete one and also the finisher of the world, which he returns to watery chaos at the end of the creative cycle. As creator, he was seen as the underlying substance of the world, the deities and all things being made of his flesh or alternative being his ka, a.k.a. ka meaning chi or ki, kai. All right. Anunakai, his Kai. Another word for Kai is Chi. Okay, so that's what the Chi represents, the life force. Okay, so this is Adam. This is Adam. This is another reason why they fear the blue black. All right, when you're talking about blue black and neuromelanin, and Adam being the second oldest of the gods ever created in the masculine form, because the first beings created was all feminine beings, Anunakai goddesses. Then they created the first 24 scientists, which were all male deities. Which were your first Anunnaki gods, with Zeus, aka Satan, being the head scientist. He was the first one created. The second one created was Adam. All right. So as we as after we created the whole universe, I was also one of the original twenty-four scientists. All right. Now after the whole multiverse was created, okay, we then create decided to set up a headquarter plan, a second headquarter to our original headquarter, Sirius X, which is Xylanthia, in the Sirius star system. Okay, that's that's headquarters, but we wanted a new headquarter, right? A second headquarters, so to say. So this is when I told you all the story about how, you know, Planet Kai was the last planet created. Okay, Adam was the one that he was the first one to come to Kai. Okay, he was the one that that sent word back home that Kai needed more help, that it would need more work before it could be ready. Okay, so Adam was was also represents he who is many. And it won't never say that on here, but this is true ancient metaphysics. Adam's represents he who is many. So when they tell you in the Bible about how they told uh, God told them, go be fruitful and multiply. That's what the goddesses told to Adam back home on Sirius X. And Adam is a black god, an Anunnaki god. So he looks just like me or any black man or Latino man you see walking around. Okay. So. You know, when they depict these guys in Egypt, they always want you to think they these out of worldly characters. They don't they don't just want to show you regular black people because they don't want the truth to be out there. But that's their rare. We're just we are the gods and goddesses of, of ancient lore. OK, so Adam, once he got here to Kai, he broke himself up into many pieces. OK, he he he, he multiplied, even giving some of himself to Kai to form the planet itself. That's why to this day, planet Earth actually has atoms in it. OK, and not only Earth has atoms in it, but every avatar that was was later created on the planet Kai, which we now call bodies, are composed of what? Atoms. OK, this is why the body has atoms. OK, so you can say that Adam being one of the original gods is an ancestor who has broken up his, his, a piece of himself is in a little bit of everybody's avatar and not just everybody's avatar, but the planet, the plants, the animals and the planet herself. All right. Because this is what he chose to do in the beginning. Okay. He who is many. The be fruitful and multiply. That's what that represented. But. But though. He was hidden. He has been hidden from you. All right. And, he, and they talk about him in Egyptian. You know. They talk about how he was basically. The creator. Okay. So that's us. And that's why Egypt, the Egyptians depicted him as at the least black. OK, so that was Adam. But it was many gods and goddesses. Remember that it's just he was one of the original 24 male gods created. and He was the first one to actually come to Kai. All right. That's that's why in Egyptian lore, he's looked at as the first one to come to Earth. He that's why he's called the Lord of the universe. OK, that's 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 the real Adam. OK, now let's keep going. It's more than four atoms. Now, the second atom is A-D-A-M, which is God's first creation in religion. The one who they tell you, hey, God made Adam and Eve and blah, 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 blah. OK, this is the, the European, the Eurocentric, the westernized version of the true story of Adam. And, you know, we did be meaning Zeus created human beings. So the story of Adam and Eve in the Bible is the story of the human beings being created. But they stole the name Adam from the original Adam, which is one of the original gods, Anunnaki gods, and the very first to come down here to Kai. Okay. Now, the third Adam is Adam, A-T-O-M, meaning smallest unit of ordinary matter. Everything breaks down to atoms at its smallest form. Why? 
because everything has a piece of Adam in it. In it. Remember, Adam means he who is many. So when they told you in the Bible, the story of God said, be fruitful and multiply. No, the goddesses said that to Adam. They told him to multiply, be fruitful and multiply. And he multiplied within himself. OK, because this is the gift that was given to him. He broke himself up into many pieces, meaning he put a, a piece of his energy into everywhere to make himself omnikinetic, omnipresent. So this is why to this day we have atoms in us. Atoms is in everything. All right, let's look it up. All right, and they know this. So they had these four different meanings behind one word. And this is all a part of their spelling to trick you away from neuromelanin and, and, and blue black. Atoms. An atom is the smallest unit of ordinary matter that forms a chemical element. Every solid, liquid, gas, and plasma is composed of neutral or ionized atoms. Atoms are extremely small, typically around 100 picometers across. Now, remember I told y'all, what are the four phases of matter? Solids, liquids, gases, and plasma energy. All right? The lowest vibration is solid as you move up in vibration. Once you go into the plasma realm, you're going into the quantum realms. All right? Cosmic realms, okay? So... Adam is the smallest. Why? Because he put a piece of himself in everything. This is what, I, this is what the Adam really is symbolic of. This is also why if you click on Adam in Wikipedia, right, you'll see how intelligent atoms really are. So that'll let you know that atoms is not just some shit floating around in your body. Okay? An atom is the smallest unit of ordinary matter that forms a chemical element. Every solid, liquid, gas, and plasma is composed of neutral ionized atoms. Atoms are extremely small. They are small. They are so small that they're accurately predicting their behavior, keyword behavior, using classic physics as if they were tennis balls. For example, it's not possible due to quantum effects. So what this means is that they, they, they behave like fucking they got their own brain. All right. Now, let's keep rule. Let's keep moving. Every atom is composed of a nucleus. OK, so every single atom in you has its own nucleus and one or more electrons bound to the nucleus. The nucleus is made up of one or more of protons and a number of neutrons. Okay, so we're going to find out. Now, let's keep reading. Only the most common variety of hydrogen has no neutrons. Remember, hydrogen is what we originally breathed. This is why it doesn't have any neutrons. Now, let's find out what they say. More than 99% of an atom's mass is the nucleus. Okay? The nucleus is the brain of the atom, y'all. So, atoms have brains called nucleuses, y'all. All right, and yo, like, like, like this is how atoms have intelligence. You get what I'm saying? Because your ancestor Adam did this. Okay, now they can't ex describe this, but this is the true reason why. Now check this out: the protons have a positive electric charge. The electrons have a negative electric charge. Okay, this is why opposites attract: positive, negative. This is why it's duality in all things, y'all, because all things have atoms in it. And an atom has a nucleus. And when you get down into the nucleus, which is the brain of the atom, it has a positive and negative charge. So this is why I told you it's duality in all things, even down to the atom. Okay. All right. Come on, man. This shit get deep, man. Come on, man. This shit get real deep, man. They don't want you to. You hear me? So this is Adam, though. We talking ancient metaphysics, y'all. Hidden history, y'all. Hidden history, y'all. Now, let's look at the last atom, which is autumn. So you got, oh, you got, you got autumn, Adam, autumn. So you got autumn, the real God, us, first Anunnaki, our one of our brothers. Then you got Adam, right? Then you got Adam, which is in a chemical compound, right? And then you got autumn. Like fall. Now, what is autumn? Autumn is the fallen god who became a principality in Zeus' army after she fell in frequency. All right? So let me show y'all. A lot of y'all don't even know that, Ad that autumn, what you thinking is a season, is not a fucking season. Okay? Let me show y'all something. Let's, let's go to it. Let's go to it. Show y'all something, man. All right. So remember, let me click on it. Okay. Now, this is what they call autumn. Okay. Autumn 
is one of the four temperate seasons outside the tropics. Autumn marks the transition from summer to winter. In September or March, when the duration of daylight becomes noticeably shorter and the temperature cools considerably. Okay? Check this out. One of its main features in, in autumn is the shedding of leaves from the um from trees from trees. Okay? The city is trees. Okay? So it's all about the equinox. It's all about the equinox. Now check this out. In North America, autumn traditionally starts with the September equinox, September 21st, and ends with the winter solstice, December 22nd. Okay. Now we know that winter is not real. It's not natural to the planet. It's fake. Okay. So let's go down and look at something. Let's, let us go down and look at something. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, let's look at this. Now. If winter doesn't exist, because everywhere on the planet was naturally warm, okay? Then they invaded us, and they created winter. It was part of their technology that they brought to this planet to help keep us enslaved. So basically, autumn is the bridge between summer and winter. So if it was no winter originally, that means it was just summer, spring, and autumn, okay? But then... That would be a lie. It was never a spring or autumn because it was never a winter. Spring and autumn is only needed because of winter. It was always just summer, naturally, okay? It was summer because it's warm everywhere and the cosmos is warm, all right? Heat, everything is heat. We are spirit and soul, so it's warm everywhere, naturally. Even your body to this day still has a warm temperate in it, naturally, right? Okay. Everything dies in the winter. Now watch this. Imagine it just being summertime year round. It's no winter. Okay, if it's no winter, you can't have a spring because spring is there to bring you out of winter. So in spring, everything starts to what? Be reborn again and begins to spring back and grow back because it died during winter. Okay, so it would be no spring. Now let's look at autumn. Autumn wouldn't be there at all because Autumn leads you into winter. So, spring, autumn, winter, all man made, right? All man made and spring and autumn are both positive and negative effects of winter. Both autumn leads you into winter, spring brings you out. Okay, summer is the only natural thing on the planet. Now, check this out. Let's go read it on the, on the thimble. Autumn is actually a fallen god who became a principality in Zeus's army. So she's a feminine entity. All right. After she fell in frequency, she is the gatekeeper. She is the harlot who meets the gods in their essence of nature. All right. What's our essence? Our essence is warmth. It's warmth. So autumn is an actual principality. All right. Who moved in once winter was created, which is false. All right. And she is a fallen God, but she's a harlot. So what's a harlot like a like like a whore? All right. She's a gatekeeper, though. She meets the gods, the gods and the goddesses in their essence. Your essence is in your warmth, heat. All right. So that's in the summertime. Autumn comes in the summertime. Now, you were told this warmth that is natural to your planet is summer. Because they could not let you know that this natural warmth that you think is summer was how your planet was year round. So they had to give it a different name. You know, when you seen this, this cold weather, they called it, they called it winter. And then they can't make it winter 24 7 year round because it's not real. It will eventually get, the planet eventually gets warm again. All right? So then that's what brought about spring because they, they created spring to give you this idea of when, when you going from cold to hot again. And then when you're going from hot to cold, that's when they brought in her, Autumn, all right? So she's the gatekeeper that meets the gods in their essence of nature, all right? And leads them into their death mentally, physically, and genetically by being the bridge to lead them into winter where they are forced, all right, to serve pagan gods like Jesus as well as have their land and DEA froze. Now, that's imperative that you get this line about how she destroys you mentally, physically, and genetically because... When you're dealing with wintertime, 
Something that's not natural to the planet. Winter destroys you mentally, physically, and genetically. All right? Nothing on you is cold. So what do you think cold air do to you? All right? So most individuals worship her when we celebrate these holidays in between her equinox. That's what, that's what, um, Halloween is about and Thanksgiving. It's not, that's about celebrating the autumn equinox because the winter doesn't, the winter solstice doesn't begin December 22nd and that's when autumn ends. Okay. This shit get deep. This is all ritual too. This is all ritual and this is all based around, all right, to destroy this truth, this hidden truth that they left behind, these, these, these secrets, all right? Which is why, even today, you're going to get slack when you this dark or if you just got carbon in your skin, period. So now, as a result, carbonated beings all over the planet, all over the realm suffer today from these oppressors because of this neuromelanin that we possess that they are trying to kill off and hide. This is why the, the lecture I gave on DEA was so important yesterday about Mark Henry, okay? Now, what I want to connect to y'all even deeper is this character that they came out with, and he was all about us, named Dr. Manhattan, okay? Notice he was blue, right? Because this is the power of blue. Not, Dr. Manhattan is all about the, about the gods and goddesses. Look at his abilities. Dr. Manhattan is a fictional character who appears in comics, in DC Comics. He is considered the most powerful superhero in all the comics because he possesses unlimited powers. And what color is he? Blue. Dr. Manhattan is all about what happened to us when the Kundalini energy fully rises at 100%, y'all. Go watch Dr. Manhattan comic books and read about him. This is all about our DEA and what happens to us when we reach 100% Kundalini activation, y'all. All right? Now, it's no coincidence that the most powerful superhero in all the comics is blue as fuck. Okay? <laughs> now, let's, let, let's go down to his fucking powers, though. Okay? Because this is all in your neuromelanin. Check this out. Powers and abilities. Pay attention. Check him out. Throughout Watchmen, he is shown to be absolutely powerful and invulnerable to all harm. Pay close attention to this shit, y'all. Even when his body is disintegrated, he can reconstruct it in a matter of seconds and remains unharmed. Fuck that. Check out Wado, y'all. Check out his power, though. Check this shit out. He is capable of altering his size depending on his needs. Check him out. For example, he can even reconstruct himself in a much bigger form. So he has the ability to, re to restructure atoms. He can hurl huge ob objects effortlessly with his hands. He is also unable to exhaust himself. John has checked this shit out. John has complete, this is um, Dr. Manhattan. He has complete awareness of and control over his atomic and subatomic particles. This is why he's able to restructure his size, y'all. This is all the shit we can do. This is all the shit your neuromelanin can do and more. That's why I say pay close attention to how they break down his abilities. Listen to this shit. Atomic and subatomic particles. This ain't science fiction. Ask yourself. Go look at any superhero, superhero abilities. Read that shit. You're going to see how scientific their powers are. And you're going to come to realize some shit. They talking about your fucking DEA, man. Wake up. They talking about your DEA. All right, you're a DEA, okay? Let's keep reading, though. He is also omnikinetic. He does not need air, water, food, or sleep, and is immortal. That's us. You don't need any of those things, y'all. Yet you have, been, you have been told that, but because you have this blue-black, which is neuromelanin, which is nine-ether bean, which makes you a carbonated nine-ether bean, 
All right. This is shit that, that you're capable of. All right. He can teleport himself and others over limitless distance, over limitless distance, over limitless distances. He is also capable of true flight, although he uses only levitation in most of his appearances. All right. Due to his perception of time, he sees his past, present and future simultaneously. This is what y'all need to pay attention to because time is not real. Right. All gods know that. Notice how this is one of Dr. Manhattan's powers. He understands that time isn't real. That's why they say due to his perception of time, he sees past, present, and future all at once. That's somebody that understands that time does not exist. Okay, which allows him to do shit like this. Have complete control over atomic and subatomic particles, man. Remember, what you believe, thus it shall be. It gets deep, y'all. Let's keep going. Dr. Manhattan is able to phase any part of his body through solid objects without damaging them. That's what you can do because you break down to atoms, y'all, and atoms vibrate. This is metaph metaphysics shit, y'all. We talking metaphysics. We already talking about atoms and atoms, and that's how we got the atom, and that's how we got the Dr. Manhattan. Let's keep reading. This is all the things of you. He can phase through any object without damaging them. He can produce multiple copies of himself without function, in the, without function independently. Remember I told you we are multidimensional beings. We have many versions of ourselves all over these different multiverses. Didn't I say that? Who the fuck you think Dr. Manhattan they talking about you, motherfucker? They talking about us, y'all. All right? They talking about you. He can produce multiple copies of himself which function independently of each other. Ain't that what Adam did in the beginning, y'all? Made multiple copies of himself. All right. But he also can project destructive energy, disintegrate people, create force fields. You already got a force field around you, y'all. It's called an aura. Transmute. You can do that. Create and destroy matter. You transmute, create, and destroy matter all the time. What you think when you write a, a name on a paper, you're creating matter. Everything he can do you is, is basic stuff that you're already doing. So, listen. All right? We talk, we talking about blue black. Let him who has eyes see clearly, man. Y'all go look more to Dr. Manhattan on y'all own. Okay? And look at his first appearance. 1986. Hey, man. And you wonder why your, your ancestors was drawing these drawings. And they, they come out with the Smurfs and and, 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 and and they give you a hard time whether you his complexion or her complexion. It's all about the neuromelanin. Let him have to see clearly. But I appreciate y'all for tuning in. We've got 2.5K live viewers. It's been a great lecture. It's been a very, very insightful one. I hope you took notes. I hope you have been paying attention. I'll see y'all tomorrow in class. Peace to the guys and guys of the planet Kai. Now we rise. One. Did you see that?